Merry meet. I was compelled to make this video compilation of clips from internet videos and TV shows and documentaries about witchcraft, paganism, Gnosticism, and esoteric studies because I want to call attention to the presentation they are generally given. Most often it is implied that they involve the Christian devil or that it should be questioned whether or not the devil is behind it all. It is expected and even taken for granted that we should only ever approach these subjects questionably, and that we should seek the devil lurking somewhere in the background, as if all pagans are keeping a collective conspiratorial secret that they secretly serve him. Either that or that pagans and occult practitioners are being unwittingly guided by the devil, and it's up to good Christians to lead them away from it. This presumption is itself an imposition of religious thought, considering that such people decidedly ignore the fact that most pagans and occult practitioners do not acknowledge a being called Satan or the devil. We often get priests, preachers, and everyday Christians making claims such as, you don't know what forces you're playing with, or you don't understand what powers you're dealing with, or you're dabbling in the occult. It's always you don't understand or you don't know, never I don't know or understand. They are thus revealing their own level of misunderstanding or lack of knowledge or willingness to understand or know. Then the pagan or occultist offers to explain themselves and are again met with claims of devil worship. If a member of a popular religion who sees the devil in all pagan spirituality or occultism really wants to understand something outside of their own spiritual model, they have but to listen. In many such relevant documentaries or video presentations, there is sinister or discordant music playing in the background. They try to get us to take seriously the medieval ideas about witches and their craft, when that's not the reality behind the actual craft. The word witch means wise one, sometimes more specifically wise woman. The word pagan means dweller in the country. The word occult means that which is hidden. Why hidden? because it had to go into hiding, else the church's long-term policy of an ensuing death hunt should begin. The church has killed many ancient faiths and its adherents, and as if that wasn't enough, added insult to injury by an equally long-term effort to destroy even the memory of these ancient faiths and practices. Hypocritically, they then subsumed many of those practices that they killed into their own religion. For example, the miracle of turning water to wine was enacted at Fountain Court in Jeresh, Jordan, before Christianity existed. These were the mysteries of Dionysus beside a temple of Artemis. The hat worn by Catholic popes resembles the head of a fish. This is no accident. The Babylonian priests, in honor of the god from the waters named Dagon, once dressed as fish men. And so, much is being condemned by Christianity, which is an intrinsic part of that very faith and religious enactment. The world's major religions today demonize nature-based religions, particularly those which honor woman and the divine feminine, and simultaneously ask us to consider wholly one male figure. Unless, of course, we're talking about the two extremes of virgin or whore. People often like to cry BS, but offer no substantial argument to support their angry, bitter, frustrated, spiritually condescending, and presumptuous claims that all individual spiritual experience involving Gnostic enlightenment and work with witchcraft and seekers and adorers of the divine feminine are supposedly all just poor souls being misled by the devil. Sometimes they are treated fairly or even with respect, 
depending on the nature of the program or integrity of the host or producers. Today, the attempt continues to keep us ignorant of true religious history, just as medieval, as well as the very earliest, church fathers had hoped would be the case. An active deprivation of our full spiritual heritage. Do you want to understand? Well, here's your chance. Here are some examples of paganism and occultism in the media including some voices of truth whom the powers that be have long tried to silence, as well as those who seek to keep it misunderstood. I think one of the reasons why people fear the word witch so much is that it brings up ideas about women's power. And for 5,000 years or longer, we have been propagandized, really, to fear women's power, to fear female power, to see it as something negative, something to be afraid of, something destructive, something evil. And naturally, we have all those associations that come up with the word witch. That's why, for me, it's important to use that word, to bring it up, to say, look, let's bring out into the light all of this stuff. Let's look at it clearly and realize we don't have to fear it. The actual religion of witchcraft is based on uh, the universal religion of paganism, which is at the root of all civilizations. It's a prehistoric religion, uh, and that gives us the sustenance to continue uh, by linking in with uh, the planetary and uh, seasonal cycles and becoming at one with the planet. So most people involved in witchcraft tend to be uh, uh, eco ecologically minded. They tend to uh, love animals and also be gregarious uh, and willing to help and serve others. And that's as far removed from the image of Satanism as you could get. But bound up in the religion of witchcraft there is also the practice of magic. And magic is a power, it's um, an abstract power, it's the power of genius and creativity which courses through the universe. It's nothing at all secular, uh, it can be applied by anyone. And magic is the method or the technique whereby you apply that formula. It's not secular at all, so therefore uh, the application of it is a question of technique rather than belief. Once you understand that magic does work, you can use it for all facets. There's been a lot of talk about uh, black and white magic, uh, and uh, it's important to distinguish between the two. There isn't a generic kind of magic which is black. Uh, there is magic, pure and simple, but the use of it uh, depends on the good taste of the operator. Now, unfortunately, there are people in creation uh, there must be room for them, for all potentialities. It's unfortunate that they do exist, who are um, more inclined towards the sinister aspects of magic, towards the uh, darker aspects, primarily because it gives them either a vicarious thrill or an excuse for uh, their own sexual abnormalities. So there's nothing wrong with that, providing they do not harm another. But unfortunately, because most of them are exhibitionists, they tend to be the ones that the newspapers get hold of. Uh, and that's the image that's been presented of occultism generally. Occ occultism is life itself to me. Uh, we are very committed people in what we do. Uh, we're not uh, evangelical in the sense that we try to push it on other people, but we are here as an access point so that people can reach out to us. We never refuse any inquiries at all. And living without occultism, to me, is really like moving up, trying to run a race with one leg. It's, it's impossible. The sole criterion in magic is that it should work. Uh, there's an old witchcraft tenet which says that the goddess offers certainty, not faith. And that's very important. So it's um, jam now, not tomorrow. Uh, and uh, it, it, uh, it, it's a strange thing, but you, unless you have experienced magic work, you don't believe it. It is only a potential. It's a possibility. Uh, but the moment that you do experience it, it changes your whole life. And uh, very much to the good. The potential of it. I mean, think of it. If you, if, you, if you haven't worked magic and you work a piece of magic and it works, the potentials are unlimited. And that is what people are doing. They're striving to complete themselves. It's their birthright and it should not be denied them. I believe that the federal government, any government, is subject to the laws of God, no matter what you or anybody else says. That's well, the problem, the with, problem with that, today. Professor Martin, is that not everybody is in agreement on what the laws of God are. Huh? Well, Isn't I, that a... I think that uh, from a standpoint of Judeo-Christian religion, that's the perspective we're talking about. Yes, yeah. we are. My question is, question is to the professor. If they have their beliefs to be witches, why would you doubt them or down them? I mean, I'm a Christian, I'm a Baptist. I believe that 
People should be what they want to be. If they want to be witches or want to lead lives as witches, why not let them be witches and let them believe what they want to believe and you believe what you want to be? That's not right to doubt. All right. <laughs> let's, uh, let's, get, let's get the record straight. From the earliest days of Christianity, it was the craft, the old witches, who were against the Christian gospel. They attacked Christianity. Christianity responded by saying, we are representing God and the Lord Jesus That's Christ. That's why more than 15,000 people me were burned. Oh, well, let's get that one straight, too. Are you, <laughs> are you going to say that Christianity and all Christians have persecuted the witches? Because if you are, some Jews living at the time of Jesus of Nazareth betrayed him. He was crucified. They were responsible for the crucifixion and for what happened to him. Does that make all Jews responsible? No. So all Christians aren't responsible either. I'm sick to death of that old witch's... Well, but uh, on the other hand... Uh, well, right. It just seems that it makes God an awfully stern taskmaster. No, it makes him a just judge. Don't you want a just judge? You know, we're even... Hey, we even why do all judges have to be male, Phil? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, I think God, it's very yeah. condescending of dear old... To be sure, to God, be sure. God is not male. Where'd you ever get that crazy idea? Well, because you keep saying... God is spirit. Well, well, God, God the Father. Is, God, I mean, you believe in the Trinity. Really, God the God, Father is... God is spirit, Jesus said. Right. And the terms father and son only express his relationship to us. I have a question, if I can. I know, I can't. I can't. I can't. You. What's I your question? You. Doesn't it seem logical? Isn't reincarnation really the answer? Doesn't it seem like a God in heaven would say to you, Go back and do it again until you get it right. Yeah. yeah. We'll be back in just a moment. Is the caller there? Yes. Did I understand Professor Martin correctly when he said that our country was based on the Judeo-Christian religion? That is absolutely correct. It has been traced back into virtually all the founding fathers who are either professing Christians or were yeah. in harmony with the Bible. What troubles you about that? Well, I do not practice any religion at all. I was brought up Catholic, and I left the church quite a while ago. It bothers me that the professor and people similar to him have a, a more or less know-it-all attitude. They feel that they are right, and, and I really think that they try to push it on those of us who still have an open mind. Do you think it's possible to have a religion without selling it? Yes, we have one. I do. So, listen, I want you to understand something. Uh, what you are right now, you are by choice. I'm not trying to well, argue but with you. hear her point. She's yeah. saying that there is nothing in the Constitution which obliges an American to be a religion or, a, or to be a member of a religion no, I, or a religious no. person or to believe in God no. or not to believe I, in I, God. I didn't right. say that. Uh, okay, and, but uh, when you say that it was founded on the Judeo-Christian... Uh, it was. It was absolutely. You know, I mean, that, let's face well, it. I think we had a few Amerindians who might uh, disagree. Look, she wants all the benefits of America which was the product of the Judeo-Christian theology, but well, she doesn't want the theology. Yes, I think it, uh, we can agree that the people who framed the Constitution, many of the folks who framed the yes. Constitution, were influenced by the Judeo-Christian. But you've got to be a little careful because a few you do. of them were. You do, yes. Right. Well, on one hand, you say you love them and you pray for the yes. witches, and on the other hand, you're trying to stomp them out. Now, what do you no. want to do for them or to that. them? I didn't say that. Well, this is no, the I'm not trying to stomp them out. I say that we as Christians have a right to speak out against witchcraft just as much as they have a right to try and sell it. That's all I'm saying. Well, we agree. If, if, if witchcraft doesn't hurt you, why speak out against it? Why don't you just let because them? God's, what are you because God said in his word that we were supposed to oppose evil. And that's all God I'm doing. God says you should yeah. eat pork, too. Yes. I, no, I want it. No. I'm, yes, he do. Do you back in the... Well, you haven't read your new <laughs> <church yet. laughs> Yes, I think it's a lot of hogwash. You do. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> just what I said. That's what they said. That's what they said about the Lord, you know, when he came down. Oh, come, come on, you're not going to equate the Lord with this hua hua stuff. <laughs> we chanted, huh? Uh, has there ever been a re now? She. Has there ever been a religion that we didn't laugh at, make fun of, ridicule? Long. Well, think about it. Remember the Shakers in England? You know, they used to shake. They threw them in jail. Threw them in jail. The thing I like to say is. Don't knock what you haven't tried. Once you've tried a healing and it's worked, then suddenly, you know, you begin to understand what we're doing. Yvonne and Gavin Frost are witches, and they've been joined by Professor Walter Martin. From its beginning, witchcraft has been occultic. It has always been associated with Satan. And whether a person... No, whether, no, no, let me no. finish. Let me finish. No, whether I will a, not abide that. Well, I have Go to finish. Ahead now. Okay, Go ahead. I've, I've finish. made my statement. It has historically been connected with Satan. That does not mean that a person in witchcraft 
automatically is demon-possessed or anything like that. It simply means that a person can be honest and sincere and dedicated and absolutely wrong. And the Judeo-Christian religion is opposed vigorously to witchcraft as a form of Satanism. Well, I think they're upset about your reference to Satan because they see Satan as a Christian invention. Mm -hmm. Satan is the Antichrist, and they don't believe in Christ. So they certainly, they say, cannot believe in Satan. Well, you have to go back a little bit further than that. Yeah. Satanism goes back to the book of Job in the, in the Bible, which is a oh, very, very old yeah. book, which antedates all of the things they're talking about. No, it doesn't. No, it does Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You haven't the done your cave homework, paintings Dr. in Spain well, are way before. <laughs> okay. uh, hang on a minute. Yes, I think ma I have done my homework. That's why I'm here. <laughs> yeah, but what has to be understood is that witchcraft isn't just what you're seeing here. Witchcraft is seances, tarot cards, communications with the dead, all of the things which God forbid in the Old Testament. No, I disagree. Can I finish? No. Well, I'll okay. let you talk. Let me talk. All right. Don't interrupt me. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to interrupt you. I just want to be courteous. All right. The fact, is, the fact is that witchcraft is not just we over a candle and uh, the altar and the bell and the book and all the rest of the things associated with it. Actually, it is a very ancient form of religion which is polytheistic, believing in many gods, was opposed by the law, the prophets, Moses, the apostles, the Lord Jesus Christ. What we are getting here is a modern revival of an old poison with a new label. And it's spiritually, it's spiritually dangerous. I will not abide it. Well, that's the Christian church's position. You well, can disagree. Oh, right. Yes. Now, that, I think, sums it up. But Why would you be so Bible, upset at his negative review of your... Well, We've heard because it all of the Bible. Well, but he's heard your condemnation of Christianity yeah. well, before. I mean, let's take First Corinthians. Isn't it a shame, really, that we're into this argument and I, bickering I and fighting? Well, hate why it. hate it? I mean, allow the man to make his point. It's obviously you don't. We're not asked, demanding that then you agree with him. Then don't reply to it. No, no, no. It's not so much that as it is sort of a. You know, the witches themselves are not getting along with each other. We've got boundaries. Well, w you don't have to be a witch to heal. Um, there's a whole lot of Christian charismatic healers who are doing great work. Whoa, Sorry. stop right there. There is no connection between charismatic Christians who employ God the Holy Spirit and witches who employ all kinds of gods and goddesses. Now, there's just no equation whatsoever. What kind of curses do you put on other people? What kind of curses? Yeah. We don't deal in, in that kind of negativity. We really don't. Um, I'm sorry. One of our basic beliefs is, and it harm none, do what you will. And that none includes yourself and includes the psyche of other people. You, you know, know what's uh, fascinating? Uh, this is the, you've made this available to us, Religious Requirements and Practices. This is a handbook for chaplains, which is published by the Department of the Army. I don't know, I don't know if it's a current, but, and uh, it's to assist chaplains in the event of uh, tragedy, death uh, of, of one of the troops. And if the troop happens to be a witch, we are ready to take care of them in the service. Uh, the American Council of Witches, there's an explanation of what witchery is, what a wicca is, what a coven is, mm -hmm. and uh, what kind of burial is preferred. So... Uh, <laughs> well, the same is true virtually for any well, religious Yes, group. it is. But I, the point is, uh, I think it's admirable, really, that the United States Army would make it its business to uh, ensure that those who are sincerely devoted to witchery be uh, appropriately accommodated at a moment of uh, crisis. Hopefully tax deductible too, Phil. You, know. you are. Literally, you are. I don't think anybody, I think anybody wants to restrict, as an American, the right of a person to be a witch or practice any other religion they want. Right. What we object to, at least in Christianity and Judaism, is any attempt to make it look as if there's any agreement or that this has not its ground in satanic power. Because Anton LaVey of the First Church of Satan, I think he was on yeah. your program one time. Yeah, long time. He said, and I agree with him, he said, really, there's only witchcraft. He said black and white is a misnomer. There's only two poles of power. Either it is God or it is the devil. God has nothing to do with witchcraft. Well, we yeah. totally disagree and we don't oh, yeah. get the Give them the opportunity to disagree, yeah. Is the caller there? Yes, I'm the caller. Yes, go ahead. I thoroughly uh, believe that these people are of the devil, of Satan. Really? I believe in Jesus Christ and God. If they had once mentioned yeah. that... Jesus Christ heals. I why don't we it. just, why, uh, do, do they trouble you? Oh, I think it's a disgrace. I well, what's going to happen? What will happen? 
outside of your baby not being fed uh, while you're talking about it. Baby, she better hurt her. Yeah, uh, are you praying for these folks? Uh, I pray for everyone. I see. Everyone. Yeah. But you really feel that they are emissaries of the devil. The devil has sent them. Is that it? I believe that. Yeah. Satan. Okay. Kabbalah sees God in terms of numbers. Okay. And there are some very, very uh, uh, important characteristic numbers in the, in the Kabbalah that are the same numbers that are important to us in the tarot. And as a matter of fact, the perfection that's exhibited in these numbers in the Kabbalah is the same perfection that makes tarot cards such a perfect vehicle, a perfect instrument for divination. And when you get involved in the tarot and you start drawing numbers and getting messages from God from license plates and, and condom boxes and, and uh, <laughs> And you want to share this information about how everything is connected to everything else. You want to share it with your friends. Don't. <laughs> they won't care as much as you do. And they'll think you're a little crazy. So take it all the way to the end and really go crazy, and then they'll see a changed you. And that will be your, the way you share your Kabbalah with people. Life is often likened to a journey in which obstacles are faced and options chosen. The images of the tarot deck reflect the stages and the challenges of this journey. To the uninitiated, the tarot cards are just pictures. To the trained reader, they are a language. The reader is the translator, the intermediary who tells the querents, as those seeking the reading are called, what their cards mean. Tarot readers are trained to identify every level of meaning in the images. Learning to read tarot requires dedication and practice. Bob Place finds that the best readers combine knowledge of the cards with intuition. To read tarot cards is a talent, but you can learn. I believe that a, all a talent is is an aptitude. So some people have more aptitude than others, just like for art. Anyone can learn to draw, but not everyone is going to draw like Leonardo da Vinci. You must learn about the symbols and the wisdom tradition behind the symbols and what the symbols mean. But then you must make the, the uh, leap of faith. You must make the intuitive decision and, and that intuition, which is just basically looking at the pictures and telling a story. The gypsies, nomadic people who moved across Europe and parts of Asia, are sometimes credited with first realizing the fortune-telling possibilities of the tarot. They were known to be card players and gamblers, but they were also experts in mysticism and magic. In previous centuries, it was the gypsies to whom Europeans turned to have their future told, with questions about health, happiness, marriage, and love. In just this way, many people now turn to tarot readers, and their questions are still the same. They called her an evil witch, but a Houston woman says all she wants to do is practice her religion and get custody of her children. Isaiah Carey has this story you'll see only on Fox and joins us now with the exclusive. Isaiah. Well, Melinda, a bitter battle played out in a Harris County family courtroom this afternoon that put a woman's religious beliefs of Wiccan on center stage. And Sylvia Ruiz held nothing back as she fired, terminated those who she said let her down. It was a custody battle that had one surprise after another. At the center, Martin Ruiz and his soon-to-be ex-wife, Sylvia. They say, oh yeah, she's a witch in the bad way. And there lies a problem. Sylvia and Martin, who have three children together, have been married for 20 years. But things started to change, and so did Sylvia's religion. She converted from Catholicism to Wiccan. Nobody can tell me what to do or what to believe. Martin wants custody of their children because of his wife's Wiccan beliefs, while Sylvia believes she's being scrutinized more in the court system because of that religious choice. That's why, without notice Wednesday, she fired her attorney on the spot, asked Judge Robert Newey to recuse himself, and attempted to fire her children's attorney. I've been a good mother, you know, and they have nothing to, to put on me. So they just looking for something, you know, hey, some spot on my name 
as a mother. Martin is a practicing Catholic, and the most he has at his home, he says, is his shrine to the Virgin Mary. But he says this frightens him and his children. Martin says it's his wife's Wiccan shop and makeshift temple at the back of their spring branch home. He took us inside, and there were pentagrams, oils, powders, bones, and an assortment of items I couldn't describe. Crazy people come here to see her. And if my kids is here, is what I'm gonna like. Martin maintains his wife charges for various Wiccan type services, from sixty dollars for card readings to two hundred dollars to get rid of bad spirits. He says people lie on the floor in the Wiccan shop naked while they're being treated for their spiritual ailments, and that's why he doesn't want his children around. All those years of work, of effort of everything. My kids, they are great kids. But Sylvia maintains there's nothing wrong with her choice of religion. She points to Martin saying for 15 years he's been an absentee father. Uh, I would say he was with us five years out of 20. He used to work in another state, you know, and just come here, uh, stay here with us like two weeks, go to Mexico. Difficult situation. Now, since Sylvia fired her attorney and asked the judge to step down, which he will do, there's no word how long this case will drag on. And remember, stuck in the middle are three children. We'll keep you updated. Let's talk about this this morning. The PC police are at it again because uh, there's Wiccans and pagans out there, right? Probably, I don't know if they make up a large percentage of the population. I do. They don't. They don't? No. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> No, they don't. And at the there are more Zoroastrians here than there are Wiccans. But apparently, maybe at the University of Missouri, they make up such an exorbitant uh, part of their population at the University of Missouri that they need to have all of their holidays now recognized. And they have a ton of holidays. This is the, now, the bad side of Wiccanism is it's obviously a form of witchcraft, but the upside is you get a ton of holidays. 20% of all school holidays, as described by the University of Missouri, are Wiccan holidays. 20% of all. Well, and this is a, a statement from the University of Missouri. This is why they say they're doing this. The information about the Wiccan and pagan holidays has been in the guide since last fall. Keep in mind, this is not intended just for faculty. This is an informational guide for anyone across campus. And again, that's from the University of Missouri. And uh, it's interesting. We had Tammy Bruce on the show earlier this morning, and this, she says, probably wouldn't happen uh, in any other country. Listen. I think that this is, again, not about elevating anyone else. It's about pagans and Wiccans being used for a political agenda to downgrade what's important to a majority of Americans. I think that this is a, an anti-tradition uh, action. I think pagans and Wiccans should be very angry about being used by the establishment. And I think that uh, uh, there should be a backlash. Of, look, the tradition in this country is, is what allows people to be pagans and Wiccans and enjoy, to enjoy their lives freely. Good luck doing that in any other country. Right, and somehow, if you're a Christian in this country, uh, too, that you can't say Merry Christmas to somebody or else you're trying to push your Christian faith on other people. Right, but you get 20 holidays now if you're a Wiccan at, I mean, I guess that's the one to go with, right? I mean, that's certainly the one. If you're going to pick one, go the one with the most holidays. Except any religion whose most sacred day is Halloween, I just can't take seriously. <laughs> I mean, I, call me a bigot. I, I'm not, you know, I'm not offering an editorial against Wiccanism. Uh -huh. Well, that would be more the pagan side of it, right? Would be would be Halloween. How many Wiccans can name every Wiccan holiday, or 50 percent of Wiccan holidays? I don't know a single Wiccan. I will say this because you know we're journalists, and I and I have covered this. I actually went because there was some backlash a number of years ago against Wiccans, and I remember I had to do a story, and I went yep. and interviewed a number of Wiccans, and they say, "Look, we are the most peaceful individuals. Mm -hmm. We just we don't practice crazy things. We're just of the earth. We believe in." I think that's right. Every earth. Wiccan I've ever known is either a compulsive D Dungeons and Dragons player or is. <laughs> A middle-aged, twice divorced, older woman living in a rural area who works as a midwife and and likes a lot of incense. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah that's all right. Let us know how, if you've met any Wiccans out there. Let us know. Uh, friends at FoxNews.com. We reported on a story about Wiccan and pagan holidays being recognized at the University of Missouri. My comments on the story offended a number of people. That was never my intention. And I also violated one of my basic life rules, which is live and let live. The Wiccans have never bothered me or tried to control my life. I should have left them alone. Sorry about that. Well said. Dame Sybil Leak. You come to her? Uh, how are you? I'm uh, really because you're known as a medium, mm -hmm. you're known as a psychic, an astrologer, mm -hmm. and also Sybil and I. And I have to express what's on the mind of our viewers, also as a witch, 
And yet, for you, it isn't a joke, and it's not an act, and it's not an evil thing, is it? No, it certainly isn't. And you're very clever. Thank you, thank you, Sybil. But at the same time... You're a uh, foxy old <laughs> Why, you're getting... Well, let me ask you, what, no, what is witchcraft? For me, it's a religion, and nothing Dating to Dating back to the Druid period? Yes, I'm a Druid. And uh, it goes well back to the time when men were just thinking there must be something greater than themselves. Even then, in this concept, yes, there was a feeling of a greater power. There has to be something greater than us. And I'm not anti-religious. I think I'm anti-hypocrisy. I agree with you. I think if you're a Roman Catholic, be a very good Roman Catholic. If you're a Protestant, be a very good Ro uh, Protestant. And I think if you're a witch, be a good witch. And I think if you're the Church of Satan, change. Ah, <laughs> then, then Sybil, witchcraft, do I gather, because it's been distorted, is not dealing with Satanism? Because no. Because we're told this, we're no. implied this by certain so-called leaders. This has been leaders. bad publicity in the Middle Ages. And, um, of course, a terrible concept that has come through because witchcraft was taken underground. Yes. And when anything becomes secret and goes underground, a mystique is built up about it. And legend is added to it and added to it. And the things that we don't understand or don't even take the trouble to understand are the things we're afraid of. That's very true. We usually give, add a certain mysticism yeah. and an occult which is hidden to it. Mm, truly. I, I tried. Yes. But you know, the church is a little funny on exorcism. They have it there, but they don't like to use it because then if they're taking something away, they have to admit it's there. Right. This evening we would like you to speak about tarot and its relation to the goddess. The image of the mm. goddess seemed to be really permeating throughout all of the cards. Can you speak to us about yeah, that? Yes, that is correct. If anybody um, even glances at the major arcana in the tarot deck, they'll see the image of the goddess all the way through it. And um, I brought out uh, before that even the word tarot, uh, T-A-R-O-T, mm -hmm. is uh, actually one of the earliest names of the goddess. Right. I mean, 10,000, 25,000 years we're talking here. 25,000? At least. Mm -hmm. uh, um, the name of the goddess was tar Taru or Tarut. Mm -hmm. Um, then this goddess, as the dynasties and cults changed, she became known by different names. Um, her next name was Nuf, then she became known as Mayat, mm -hmm. and then she became known as um, Hathor, then later Isis, uh, Lilith even, uh, mm -hmm. in the Babylonian period, and right. then uh, Inanna, Sophia, as you move more into the uh, Christian period, the Gnostic Christian period, she becomes known as Sophia, even Serki. And then down into the modern Christian era, she becomes known as Mary, mm -hmm. Mary the Madonna. But the primeval, original Madonna was um, Tarut. Mm. Um, and this word, Tarut, is very interesting, actually, for people who are interested in words, because when you pronounce the Tarut with a soft H, you get Taruf, Taruf or yeah. Truth, right. which is a modern word, Truth, that we associate with uh, factuality. And that's exactly right, in a way, because when you turn to the Tarot to have a reading, Truth is what you're looking for. Mm. In fact, the word uh, church also derives exact directly from the word tarut. When the T's became pronounced with C-H in the Anglo-Saxon, as C-H instead of T, mm -hmm. you put C-H on either side of taruch, and you get charuch or church. Oh, church, yes. So actually the word church and even the word thought, if people are into this, they can discover that even the word thought derived from the word church. Mm -hmm. And that's interesting that the word church represents uh, the female goddess because you'll even hear the Pope talking about the uh, Holy Mother Church. Mm -hmm. And now you know why is that um, they're mentioning that. Mm -hmm. and you know where that title comes from, mm -hmm. because literally church is the name of the goddess, mm -hmm. the very word. Mm -hmm. So there's, uh, there's also certain numerology connected to the goddess force as well, isn't there? Oh yeah, very much so. Um, cards, for instance, the feature numerology, the divination arts numerology is a very important um, divination art. Um, and really, if you think about it, all number, Mm -hmm. uh, is associative with the goddess force. Um, in fact, the entire scientific um, concept or forte is absolutely unthinkable without the presence of the goddess. A lot of people associate goddess worship with something new agey yeah. and unscientific and, and, you know, um, very much um, separated from science. Mm -hmm. But actually, you couldn't even think of science without the goddess, and I'll be happy to explain why that is. Because whether you're talking about Gaelic Ireland, mm -hmm. whether you're talking about um, you know, the Bronze Age Sumeria, or you're talking about the Etruscans or the Mycenaeans or the Egyptians mm -hmm. or the Chaldeans or the Scandinavians or the Greeks or the Romans, no matter which of these cultures you're talking about, you're dealing, they have their origins in the, matri the matriarchal mm -hmm. culture, which yeah. as I said, 
goes back a lot before the Bronze Age. Western scientists will just talk about the Bronze Age, but actually they have to admit that it goes much further back than that. And it was discovered in ancient times when per people started to really um, get it into their heads that there was a universal order. Mm -hmm. It was noticed that there was a mathematical and geometrical order in the universe, mm -hmm. something that could be measured and contemplated. And the reason why this was discovered was directly because of the female. Mm -hmm. The female cycle, gestative cycle, mm -hmm. was in such synchronicity with the movement of the moon and the earth right. and the stars that it suddenly uh, people twigged on mm -hmm. that there is a universal mathematical order that we mm -hmm. can contemplate and understand. But from that point on, it was never forgot that it was through the woman's body that that knowledge came to man. Right. So therefore, we couldn't even talk about science today, mathematics, numbering, or any of that stuff mm -hmm. without um, understanding the nature of the goddess. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the female body and the goddess and the woman became then the symbol of the god force. Mm -hmm. it, it became the symbol of the universe and that there is a universal order. And as I said, Christians still speak of Holy Mother Church. Right. And even priests and potentates will wear the flowing robes. Right. And people don't think anything of this, but uh, no, you'll find don't. that all people in uh, positions of authority will wear the flowing robes. And this is because they're presenting themselves. They're um, basing their, um, themselves on the female mm. or on a higher level androgyny, because when you really get into the goddess understanding of what that is, it's not so much about gender, it's about the concept of androgyny, mm -hmm. which is a magical principle. About female and male merging. Absolutely yeah. right. And so it's not so much, as I said, about gender. It's something higher than that. But on a, on a, um, on a lower level, it is mm -hmm. about the nature of feminine and masculine, male mm -hmm. and female. Mm -hmm. But um, the goddess was pictured or imaged by the ancients in three basic ways. As I said, there was the, the female body. That mm -hmm. was always a symbol of the goddess, mm -hmm. obviously. Then there was the earth, right? The fact that the green, uh, fertile earth mm -hmm. became one of her primal symbols, or the moon also. Mm -hmm. But then the third one was the body, the night sky. One of the most ancient ones going back was the actual night sky itself. This um, passed for a very important image of the goddess. And therefore, anything that happened in the, st in the sky, mm -hmm. which um, any of the movements of the luminaries, mm -hmm. this became, you know, uh, people would study this. So we have astronomy and astrology right. coming out of goddess worship. And, you know, to do astronomy, you have to know navigation. Right. So again, we find this thing about mathematics and science. And in fact, uh, people who are interested in words, as I said, the earliest, uh, one of the earliest goddess powers name was Ma Mayat, mm -hmm. uh, which in Sanskrit is the Mahat. And this is one of the reasons where the M-A turns up in certain words like mother, matriarch, muse, mm -hmm. mandala, matrix, matter, mm -hmm. matrimony, mm -hmm. um, measure. Um, you know, all sorts of words like that, like mathematics, master, and matriculation. These words that have the prefix M-A, um, and especially the word mathematics, is to measure forth. It meant to measure forth because it was never forgot that mm -hmm. uh, in goddess worship the concept of measuring was a key thing. What happened was um, there were basically four great cults in the ancient world. Mm -hmm. The stellar cult, which mm -hmm. has studied the stars. The lunar cult, which was more focused on the moon. And then there was the solar cult. Mm -hmm. And when the solar cult uh, took over, it was mostly of a, a masculine paradigm. And um, there's several reasons for why goddess worship um, started to recede. But the solar cult basically took over, and they wanted to get rid of the dominion of the feminine, sophic, what mm -hmm. we call the sophic power. Mm -hmm. As I said, there's several reasons for this, but uh, the goddess ceased to be a central figure in theocracy because human consciousness was actually changing. When you have a solar paradigm on Earth, it also um, has an implication for mental thought. And when cognition or thinking became what we call left hemispherical, yeah. which is uh, what we're in today, yeah. then the feminine gets repressed. So throughout the world, where the cu in any culture where the goddess was supreme, was the matriarch, was the creatrix, mm -hmm. she started to be, um, become secondary to the male god. Uh, originally, the male god was always seen as her progeny, second to her. Right. But it, actually, everything turned around, and the male becomes the al alpha right. image. and. Um, uh, she was relegated to the level um, of consort. Of in fact, Yeah, in fact, even mm -hmm. worse, sometimes the goddess was completely removed from divinity and mm -hmm. made into a temptress, mm -hmm. or even the femme fatale. Mm -hmm. you know, and this is today why when you think of God, you're thinking in terms of malehood, right. which, was something, that, yeah. Yeah, which is something completely unknown for millennia upon millennia. This is only something that's very recent in history, mm -hmm. to think of God in male terms, mm -hmm. a very, very recent phenomenon. How would you say, how long, how many years has, it, has uh, that taken People place? are speculating all the time. Um, you know, <coughs> Egyptologists, the ones who really know what they're doing, mm -hmm. know that this cult, um, um, especially with this thing called the procession of the equinoxes, is mm -hmm. a sort of a calendar for telling this. 
and goddess worship goes back at least 25,000 years. You know, all Orthodox religion has tried to get rid of the goddess image completely. I mean, in traditional uh, religion today, uh, women have absolutely no place. So obviously they tried their best to get rid of it completely, but then they found that their religion was very sterile. So then they had to um, keep the archetype alive because you can't, you know, completely expurge it. But they c you could marginalize it um, so that we get um, these parodies of femininity, like the Madonna. And also we get this pernicious idea that there's something weak about femininity. Yeah. With this comes the whole idea, the whole cult, the whole movement, that femininity is something weak and meek, mm. which is simply not true. Anyone in the occult traditions, anyone who does martial arts, anyone who's uh, familiar with Taoism, uh, will know that this is absolutely not mm -hmm. correct, that there's a great strength uh, in the yin force. Right. Because yin is expansive, isn't it? Well, yeah, there's many. Uh, yin is certainly not a weak thing. Right. In fact, it is the, thing, it is the energy that sustains the universe. Yeah. And the Christian Marys, both of them, Martha, Miriam, Marys, Mary Magdalene, Mary, mm -hmm. the mother of Christ, all of these female figures in Orthodox religion are basically watered down, uh, even corruptions of the original Alma Mater, mm -hmm. what they call the Alma Mater. Mm -hmm. And any, a little research will certainly reveal the truth of this. Mm -hmm. And uh, But we really have to face it that Orthodox religion, like Judeo-Christianity, is basically antithetical to everything to do with the precepts yes. of Goddess faith. Yes. Really antithetical, and they have... Uh, um, you know, the book of Genesis, for instance, if you read that, there's a clear evidence, you know, where the woman is responsible for the fall. Yes. Yeah. This is the, what I mean by that. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. But uh, talking about symbols more specifically, the number nine has always been associated with the goddess. Yes. Yeah. Um, the How is that? Why well, is that? there's lots of reasons. Do with yeah. gestation, mm -hmm. the nine months of gestation, mm -hmm. and also the, the sacred number seven and twelve. Mm -hmm. um, anything to do with the cycle. Right. Uh, the lunar numbers. 14 and 28, which are the cycles of the moon. Right. In fact, the symbol of the circle, which is the ovum. Yes. The circle is nothing but the ovum. Right. And then the symbol of the vesica, or the mm -hmm. womb, what they call the yoni. Right. This is one of her symbols, which is why churches, again, have doors shaped like that. Right. Because you're going into the most holy. Yeah, you're going into the most holy, yes. yes. And uh, the, uh, the ocean, the night sky, as I said, the cat. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's an endless subject, you know. But one of the most revered of all of the images associated with the goddess is the tree of life. And mm. this is something that I get into a lot in my classes and my work. Yeah. Is this image of the tree of life, which is known as the Kabbalistic tree of life. Mm -hmm. But for thousands and thousands of years, the female body was always known as the tree of life. And the fruits mm. that came from the tree were the uh, ovums mm -hmm. that uh, the, the goddess gave life to, mm -hmm. seeds placed in her womb. Um, so when the ancients looked at the night sky, which was her go body, mm -hmm. and saw the sun and the moon, and at night you see the stars, they saw those as being seeds inside the womb of the great mother goddess. Yeah. This is how they saw ancient things. Alternatively, and that's in fact one, one of the reasons why you light fireworks. Mm -hmm. you know, as we saw at the millennium, people were lighting a lot of fireworks. That's because you're throwing seeds into the body of the goddess mm -hmm. to say, well, we want new life. Right. We're hoping for a flourishing tomorrow. Yeah. So all of these traditions come from goddess worship because we were literally seen as living inside mm -hmm. her body and that the planets were like embryos, in a way, which would blossom forth and give us life. Mm -hmm. So people literally felt in the ancient world that they were walking inside the body of the goddess. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know what that tells you, but that means that they lived in a very Beautiful. sacred way. Yeah. And today we're raping the earth and uh, molesting the animals yeah. and doing all sorts of things. We've completely moved away from Separating it. Separating ourselves from ourselves. Absolutely. Yeah. When you know that you're living inside the womb of your mother, yeah. and you, you, that's where you are, the great goddess, that totally changes the way that you perceive the planet. Yeah. And the Egyptians and the Native American Indians and the Celtic Druids, the Celtic Druids forbade themselves to cut any living thing with a mm. sharp instrument. Compare that to, to ta today's yeah. horror, you know. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And another way of looking at it also was that um, the ovum, the tree of life, bears apples. Yeah. So in ancient days, the apple was always the symbol of the ovum. This I is a fact that's uh, been this is, yes, this has been uh, something that the ancient scholars talked about. Mm -hmm. um, because even before these modern books that I mentioned had been written, goddess worship, um, goddess uh, theories had been written on in the previous centuries, and one of the things that they found was that the symbol of the apple was always a symbol of the ovum. And in fact, in the book of Genesis, when they're talking about the biting of the apple, yes. which uh, the Christians corrupted this myth because they wanted to disempower the female, yes. which they succeeded in doing. I mean, they were absolutely ruthless. Um, for instance, in Gnostic periods, yes. in the, um, after the advent of Christianity, the Gnostics tried to go back to goddess worship, and they were completely ruthlessly put down. Mm -hmm. So goddess worship went underground and comes out in alchemy and tarot. Mm -hmm. So the tarot is a much more profound thing than people realize. Mm -hmm. 
But um, the apple, as I said, was always a symbol of the female ovum. Mm -hmm. So the biting of the apple, the serpent biting the apple, or the serpent um, asking someone to bite the apple was always a symbol of conception, mm -hmm. because the serpent has always been the symbol in ancient times of the sperm, the spermatozoon. Oh, so when the sperm okay. is coiling around the apple, yeah. as you see it, yeah. the apple is the ovum. So actually the serpent biting the apple or telling someone to bite the apple was always a covert cryptic story about conception, mm -hmm. which was always the province of what? The yeah. goddess, the female. Right. So Christians, um, the, the founding fathers of Christianity, the patriarchs, needed to get rid of this. They mm. needed to get rid of the supremacy of the right. goddess. And they blamed the woman again. The whole book of yeah. Genesis was to do this. It was a propaganda mission to deep disempower the female. In yeah. fact, uh, they didn't do it really that successfully in, in, in some senses because the word Genesis still talks about the, the goddess because mm -hmm. the word Genesis, as the scholars know, means the genes or the generation of Isis. Mm -hmm. Genesis, the first book of the Bible, means generation or genes of the goddess Isis. Mm -hmm. And Isis was the moon goddess. Well, no, um, yes, she was oh, the no, goddess no. Uh, of the moon when the lunar cult was, uh, was uh, prevalent on Earth. Mm -hmm. But see, each cult will use the goddess. Right. Um, the goddess is an all-pervasive archetype, and everyone has their own uh, use for it. Mm -hmm. But the supreme goddess, as I say, so this is, you know, orthodox religion, and that's why women are prohibited to have any form of a doctrinal or clerical or ecclesiastical duty, because they know that uh, if, if we get back in touch with the feminine, there might be a complete change in mm -hmm. the mindset. And so there's been an absolute 100% prohibition yeah. within the Catholic Church and within orthodox religion in general to dis debar w women. Mm -hmm. And women don't even know really why no. they're being debarred. This I is the whole problem. So. You know, um, they have, need to find out that in the stellar cults, the lunar cult, and the solar cult and the Saturnian cult, women played a very big role. Yeah. And it's only in a very, what we would call modern history, that this, uh, the tables have been turned. So today, we need, we're going the wrong way about it. We are literally half-witted. Yeah, you know, we, yeah, we are people who are working with only half of the mind, and only a very small part of that. Yeah. So the right brain is more inclusive. It's holistic. Mm. It deals with alchemy. Mm -hmm. Alchemy sees the whole in every part, mm -hmm. whereas physics sees the part mm -hmm. within the whole. Yeah. Physics divides and separates. Yeah. Physics uh, reduces the, the divine mm -hmm. to the human, mm -hmm. whereas alchemy takes the human up to the divine. Mm -hmm. So there's a, lots of different ways of looking at it. And alchemy is nothing but uh, tarot. Tarot mm -hmm. is the book of life. Um, when you know its operations and its motions, you can bet that it, it will bring magic into your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, if you wanted to share with us a little bit about what types of people come to your class. Do you have Christian people come? Do you oh, have yeah. young people come? Old people, yeah. men, women, from all groups? Yeah, from all from walks of all life. Walks of life. Yeah, there's yeah. absolutely nothing, uh, you know, segregating about it. There's people from all walks of life. In fact, uh, since I've been working in California, I've found people from a lot of professional spheres. Yeah. Because, again, it has been used, even royalty and uh, people uh, behind the scenes. Uh, of government uh, have been using the divination arts to empower themselves. Absolutely. And I know this because I practice it and I've given readings to people who are on the um, you know professional level, the executive level, mm -hmm. and they seem to be benefiting from it. So it's becoming more aware now as the New Age movement uh, has helped mm -hmm. people to realize that there is a very practical use yeah. for this. I mean, we don't have time anymore in life for something that's not practical. Right. And of course, it turns out that the tarot is very practical as well. It can help you in relationships and business in um, in any kind of financial dealings that you're doing. Mm -hmm. It deals with problem solvings. Mm -hmm. It deals you in family situations. And of course, ultimately, in your spiritual development yeah. is what it's for. But it is a very practical oracle. Mm -hmm. And the feminine, in the ancient days, the feminine was connected with the oracles. Absolutely. You know, when in Delphi, in Cappadocia, and yeah. all of these uh, um, places in the world that yeah. were con connected with sacredness, and in Celtic Ireland as well, yeah. Yeah. the goddess was connected with the oracles. Yeah. But you have a living oracle within you. And we, in this world today, especially in the 21st century now, yeah. uh, we need to get in touch with that oracle. Absolutely. And the tarot is one of the most important ways of, of doing that. So it sounds like tarot is a wonderful way to invoke yeah. the, the goddess and the divine That's energy right. within yourself and yet yeah. become closer to your source. Absolutely. So and in fact, it does that very quickly. Yeah. Um, it does that. It helps you get in touch with your inner source, which is the goddess force. Yeah. But it takes somebody of integrity and wisdom to explain it because there is a lot of charlatanism. There's a lot of um, superficial research that's gone into it, yeah. and a lot of fetish tarots and all sorts of things out there. But there's an authentic tarot and there's an authentic way to teach it, yeah. which is connected with Kabbalah, with numerology and astrology. Yeah, yeah. And that's what uh, yeah. we're doing. Shakti. That's the energy which flows outward from God. So Shakti flows outward from God and comes to you. That's what they believe. Okay. 
That's Shakti. Shakti, incidentally, means wife. Now, this is the kicker. And we're going to get to the point here why traditional Judaism was very, very hostile to the Kabbalah. Do you know why? Feminine. All feminine. It is the feminine God. And nobody, including Christians, can deal with that. What do we say today? Tammuz came to the earth, wound up in the netherland down in the bowels of the earth to save the people who were captive. Who had to come down to save him and bring him up? Easter. The goddess, his sister, Easter. What that mean? Jesus Christ down in the bowels of the earth. Who had to save him? The Holy Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit? Feminine. It is the feminine of the part of the God. This, you know that you in most churches you can't. Even, they won't even allow a woman to stand up on a pulpit. And and do you know they have totally missed it because they've taken macho control of the whole thing. And if anything, if you want to talk about women's lib, why was it necessary? Most of it is necessary because of the sexist discrimination that against women that originated with religion. And yet here it is, the splendor of the Kabbalah, of which most of your Bible is written in the tree of life, Shakti is God's wife. And she is the one that moves in and does the work, Shakti. The pineal gland of the brain, which is the corridor for the messenger, is the single eye of ancient writings. And ancient times they would call it the single eye, it's the pineal gland of the brain, it's the hallway or the corridor from which light enters the body. The pineal gland, if you look it up in a scientific document or whatever, is referred to as the body's light receptor, the single eye. And then Jesus comes along and in Matthew 6.22 said, the light of the body is the eye, if therefore your eye be single, your body will fill with light. And there's the reference to the single eye. There's the reference to the single eye, meaning your body will fill with light. The Bible says God is light. And Jacob in the ancient Old Testament said, I've seen God face to face, and I'll call the place Peniel. But this is the amazing part to me. The amazing part to me is that religious people pay no attention to this whatsoever. They don't even consider this. The point in the body where God is met face to face is declared by the religious to be the opening for devils. And they'll tell you, don't do that. Don't get into that meditation. Don't go downstairs with all those crazy people. You'll open your mind to devils. Well, what did, you know, what do they mean by that? They totally disregard the fact that Jesus said, if your eye be single, your body will fill with light. It's in the Bible. They don't, they don't consider that. They totally disregard the fact that Jacob says, I have seen God face to face. I'll call the place Peniel. They disregard that. <coughs> in, in the Vatican, at, um, on the Sistine Chapel, it's in a, there's, a, there's a drawing by, who I guess, Michelangelo. And the drawing is of, you know, angels and all this. But as you look at it from... A distance, and, and, so, and I'll have a picture for this to show you shortly. It's the human brain. And right outside the front door of where that drawing is, there's a cement statue of a pine cone. And, you know, somebody knows what's going on. But that isn't revealed to the average person. You know, it's just a statue of a pine. Why do you have a statue of a pine cone in the front door and then a, a painting which is obviously a symbolic painting of the human brain on the, because it's talking about the pineal gland of the brain. The very, very same thing here that it, we're, we're discussing. So instead of understanding this and instead of understanding about the pineal gland of the brain and sharing it with people so that people can find, they talk about where do their traditional values go when they want to put prayer back in school and all of the other distractions that cloud the facts that they're actually turning their back on the very Bible that they revere as sacred. They all carry Bibles around, but what it says in the Bible they don't want anything to do with. 
Because the Bible or God is not near as important as religion to them. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you Stott. do. Morgan Stott. I'm a high priestess of Morning Star Coven and co-founder of Boulder Pagan Alliance, amongst numerous other things. A high priestess. A high priestess. Yes. Should I be intimidated? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> You'll find out by the end of the 60 minutes. <laughs> I'm sure I will. And what is your answer to the first question? Are pagan Satanists? Because no, a lot not. of people think they are. Uh, yes, a lot of people do think we are Satanists. Part of the reason is because of our symbol. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a pentagram, and you see it a lot, uh, used in a lot of different ways. Usually when you talk about Satanists, you see it this way. Yes. And the reason is because the Satanists take everything and invert it or pervert it. Uh -huh. And this uh -huh. symbol is a pretty obvious symbol. You rarely see the inverted cross the same way you do the inverted pentagram. Uh, this particular pentagram is done in all the colors with the spirit, uh, air, fire, water, and earth. And what it symbolizes is the four dimensions or, or directions and spirit with the spirit above. So the single point is usually a, a, a up. Hmm. And what's, it, what's in the center? Life. Life? Life in you. general. All right. Yeah, you are the All center. Right. Um, mm -hmm. In older traditions, they were worn upside down when you started because it showed that your mundane world was still ruling your spiritual. And as you progressed along the path, you became more spiritual over your uh, mundane uh, world, your spiritual world. But that's where some of the uh, symbolism comes along and that uh, Satanism has taken. And much of the history of it comes from a time period where anything that wasn't of the church was of Satan. Yes. But we are not Satanists. The Middle Ages, you mean? Dark Ages. Dark Ages. Yeah, Inquisition. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is Hollywood. Hollywood has had a heyday with what we really Gee, are. Gee, Rosemary's Baby. And oh, yeah, they love Disney, it. Disney, Disney really. It, a movie about what witches really were would be deucedly boring. <laughs> it wouldn't sell real well. Uh, but as far as these strictly are we Satanists, we don't believe Satan exists. We are from, our roots go back to a time period well before Satanism. Uh, Satan, the concept of Satan itself actually didn't come into existence until 462 AD. So Satan is technically a Christian god versus a pagan god. It did not come in until after Christianity. Until after Christianity, yes. isn't Satan described in the Bible uh, in an earlier time? Actually, mm -hmm. he is described he in is, the Bible. He is, but not as the horned beast that he is later. The actual description I was see. put in in 462 in a papal conclave of Constantine II. And basically, what it, way it was worded was to catch all of the pagan gods. Most of the old pagan gods are antlered or horned gods. And so by making it an evil horned god, you pretty much caught all of the pagan gods. You caught them all that way. Yeah. And, and, the, and the tail with, with a sharp point and, and, and the That comes from one of the specific gods. Uh, it does? It, well, some of it. The pitchfork, not per se, but there's, uh, Baphomet is a tailed. He's one of the gods that they used early. DJ, would you introduce yourself and respond to the second question, which was, uh, do pagans curse people? Um. My name is DJ Kirby. Yes. Um, I'm a ceremonial magician. I am co-founder of the Circle of Lavender Fire, which is a gay male Wiccan circle. Um, and I guess you'd call me an elder. An elder. An All elder. Right. All right. Um, no, we don't curse people except maybe in traffic. Um, in traffic. <laughs> And then it's a different kind of person. <laughs> I think we person. all curse people in traffic. Yes. yes. But I mean, do you, do you actually put hexes on people? and? Uh, well, no. No. Um, it's considered unethical. Um, the one rule by which Wiccans and uh, Kabbalists and pagans in general live their life is, and it harm none, do it thou wilt. Which means you can't hurt anyone, and a curse is a form of hurting someone. Mm -hmm. So it's completely against the first law. So I couldn't get you guys to, to curse the IRS for me on ta income tax? <laughs> no? Uh, not that it That's hasn't been way. considered. <laughs> <laughs> not that it hasn't uh -huh. been considered, uh -huh. but no. Um, it's, it's bad karma. What you do comes back to you. Um, it's against the law and it harm none, which includes yourself. And It's bad karma. Karma is among pagans a universally accepted law that what you do comes back to you. It may not be in the same form, but the energy you send out 
will return to you. What goes around comes around? Basically, yep. yeah. Um, Do as you sow, so shall you yes. reap. Well, now, I've heard the word karma used in association with, with Hinduism, Buddhism. Mm -hmm. Well, that's where the word itself comes from. They, they, they... My 13-year-old daughter uses this wannabe terminology all the time. Yes, there are a lot of wannabes. Well, there are a lot of wannabes yes. out there. And there's yes. a lot of them that read one or two usually really bad books and think they know what they're doing. And most of the, quote, Satanists out there are doing the same thing. They're reading one or two bad books, and mm -hmm. they're what they call pseudos. So they'd be pseudo-Satanists or pseudo-witches. Because they really don't know what they're talking about yet. Half of the yeah. kids are into shock value. Going home and telling mom, gee, I just became a witch today, is likely <laughs> to get a rise out of her. <laughs> Get some attention. That would get mom's attention, attention. Yes. Yeah. especially if, if, if mom is a fundamentalist. Yeah, yeah. It can you know. be a great way to get attention, <laughs> to get uh, pe people shocked, to be different. Yeah. Has tremendous shock value. Great shock value. There yes. are three yes. kinds of witches. There are. What are they? The jewelry? Are, there's the ones that are in it for the jewelry. Just think wearing the pentagrams and the black clothes is really cool. Yeah, they show the up in value. black everything with lots of jewelry and, mm. and weird makeup. And, and crystals and everything. Yeah. Morgan, how about you? What do you do? I'm a witch in my real life. <laughs> this is your real It's part this, of your it real is, life. Yeah, that's... Yes. Yes. I, I, what I do for a living okay. versus my real life is a different thing. What do you do? I train horses. Is that why your name's Morgan? Yes, it is. Uh. That's it where is? it came from. <laughs> it really is. It okay. is where it came from. When I was a teenager, I, I rode a Morgan horse and I drove a Morgan car and I got dubbed that Morgan girl uh, and it stuck. It stuck. It stuck. So it has been there ever since. For high priestess, you're really funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, our coven, it's a standing oh, is rule in our coven, very strict rule that yes. you have to be able to pun. You have to be able to do double entendres. We once <laughs> decided that if we couldn't do either puns or double entendres in any meeting, if we decided we could not do any of these things or jokes in a meeting, we'd be totally silent. We wouldn't know what to do. Humor is a very important part mm -hmm. of the religion. If you can't laugh at your own religion, it's no You're taking religion. yourself too seriously. You've got to lighten up. Many so of, the, of the religious fundamental right, uh, religious right, are contributing to things like Amendment 2. Um, to uh, limit people's right to the, constitutional uh, rights. They preach uh, book burning. Um, s some of them have gone so far as to preach the murder of gays and witches and Jews and lesbians, and um, they call yeah. themselves Christians. The, um, that's they, not Christianity, they're, they're, that's churchianity. They're, uh, they're spending money um, to make pr pr produce videos saying that Witches are out to eat their children, take over the government, kill all the Christians, burn all the books. We don't do that. We actually, most pagans are terrible bibliophiles. Are you folks endangered oh, by yeah. these kinds? Of um, yes, I actually have an experience. Um, I belong to a, a coven in Hawaii. I was in the military. And um, a, a friend of mine there came that close to being burned at the stake, and this was in 92. And You're wondering. serious? I I'm am very, very serious. serious. There are people now who are losing their children simply because they somebody heard them admit that, yes, they were a witch, or they followed the, the Wiccan path. You mean the courts ruled against them? How did they lose? They yes. have, have lost custody in the courts, in, in, not in this state. This state's real good, but in Texas uh, there have been, and there's one in the court right now in Arkansas. And the only reason they did it is because the woman, or the mother, was a witch. That was their reasoning. It happened not too long ago in Colorado Springs in 88, mm -hmm. I think it was, I don't remember. Yes. I think it was 88. Um, a man let some of his co-workers know that he was a practicing witch. Mm -hmm. And it took several years through the courts before the court said that this is a valid religion and mm -hmm. you couldn't take his children away because of it. Yeah. It does still happen. Losing jobs, a lot of, it, yeah, a lot of people lose jobs. jobs. Which is part of the reason why we're so enthusiastic and happy to be on the show is um, Halloween is when everyone starts thinking, oh, witches and all oh, the green green skin and Get big noses, noses and warts. Yes. Um, I don't think we're too this, green, are we? This is when we do our <laughs> primary, this is when we do most of our, our outreach. PR. PR work saying, no, we don't do this. We're really nice people. But calling yourselves witches doesn't sound to me like really good PR. Well, because we, of are all these yeah. we are re yeah. trying to reclaim a history. <coughs> mm -hmm. uh, you know, the witches, original witches uh, were the healers, the midwives, yes. the old woman of the village that had the, the midwives and the herbal knowledge.
and the priests and, and, and the shamans. Yeah, and took care of the, the village. Mm -hmm. uh, that person was somebody we, we'd like to reclaim that name for. The word witch means to shape or to bend. We're shaping our lives which also you know, leads to being in control of your life, the personal responsibility for your own life. Personal responsibility. Yeah. Personal responsibility is a very big uh, part of the religion, yes. uh, personal growth. Yes. Which is one of the reasons that the Inquisition was so against the pagan religions is because you were in charge of your own life. Yeah, and you it weren't. gave you control to monitor and develop your spiritual self. So the church was no longer in control of their lives? It was no, controlled. the church was trying to control. Yes, yeah. yes. But, but before that, yeah. Yeah. Before that, a person yeah. was in control. The pagans or the heathens originally you know, were liter literally heathen and pagan both mean of the country. Of the, of the heath. It's because heathens are they on were the, the heath. Out in the country, they were the last to be affected yeah. by the, the large, the urban, the large yeah. church activities. Christianity went through the, the dark nobility ages. first. Through what? The nobility. nobility. The nobility. So that uh -huh. once you have the king or queen or whoever converted, they could force by the sword conversion. Most of what happened through Inquisition really had nothing to do with Christianity. It had to do with power. Yep. There were people within the church, mostly men, because <laughs> the church really yes, only deals right. with men. Uh, in fact, at that time in, time in that era, women didn't have souls. Uh -huh. uh, but it was a matter of control. And, if and anybody became... you couldn't control, mm -hmm. you got rid of. All right. And fear is a very fast way of making people do what you want them to do. I always, when I needed quiet time, I came from a very abusive family. And escape was necessary. I lived in the country. I would go into the, the woods behind the house. I would disappear into the woods. And I often, as I went to the, the property line, would leave everything I had with me close everything right there at the property line because I was making a change. I was leaving everything that was bad behind and stepping into this world which was safe. How old were you then, Morgan? Eight, nine maybe. Mm. Very young. Very young. And then I had a couple of trees that I would go talk to basically and make circles in mm. or around because you, know, you make a stone circle it's like having a little wall around you. I found a group in Boulder, a shop that had tarot decks. Mm -hmm. was called Coven Gardens and I through them I met people who uh, at that point were ceremonial yes. and I started to learn from them and found that I didn't really like the ceremonial it's more strictly magic and not the religion but through them I met other witches and found out that all these things that I'd done and felt had names to them there really was a whole group of people out there doing the same thing and it's called coming home most of us mm -hmm. have the same kind of experience. Coming home. It's not, Coming home. You're, con you're not converted into paganism. You come home yeah, to We it. do yeah. not allow conversion or proselytizing. But so there's a feeling when you come home of, of this is where this I belong. Is right. yeah. mm -hmm. This is where I've always been. I just didn't know the words for it. This is home. This is my, these home. people are my family. Yes. I took mm -hmm. a wander and I've come back. Is paganism catching on? Is it, is it growing it is in numbers? It is the fastest growing religion in America. The fastest it's, it's growing religion. It's actually the fastest growing religion in the world. In the world. Yeah. It um, is the, and it is amazing. the leading religion in the world if you consider the fact that all the Buddhists and the Hindus and all of those fall into the pagan category. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, one of the things I'd like to mention real quick is that, real quick real quick <laughs> is that you see okay, this panel with all the men and only one female, mm -hmm. where in reality, because it is a nature-based and a goddess-based yes. religion, mm -hmm. the majority of followers are female. It's predominantly a female. It's predominantly movement, female. Yeah. Um, it's, well, at least it's very it's, it's, popular with women because it... It um, empowers women. Exactly. Mm. And the men who are drawn to it are men who respect women and women's power. They're feminists. Mm -hmm. uh, Go women. Yeah. Of, <laughs> all right. <laughs> the Alan Aldas, uh, the, the Phil Donahues. And a lot of gays and lesbians types. are drawn to paganism. Yes. It's that, accepting. And it's accept it, there is no judgment. The goddess does not say, mm -hmm. you're gay. You're going to hell. You're going to hell. So there gays and lesbians hell. can find a place then yes. in the right. paganism. Because, well, because the way we see it is um, we were created this way. We, we that's are the way all we are. Whether you're gay, black, We are all whatever. part of divine, and divine is not wrong.